I'm uh, reconvening this hearing. This is the annual oversight performance hearing, agency performance hearing that the Committee of the Whole holds on agencies under the purview of the Committee of the Whole. And in fact, this is the first of four hearings. The time is 3.20. We are considering the last of three agencies that we are uh, hearing at today's hearing, and that is the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. And, um, you know, uh, Ms. Diener, you probably were the most direct in your testimony saying we should just <clears throat> rescind the disposition. That would require a legislative act, I believe. That's two votes and a um, signed by the mayor or overriding a veto. That would probably be difficult, especially since, you know, the votes on the disposition were, if not unanimous, they were nearly unanimous. So that's a lot of folks would have to change their mind. But don't you think that might put the district at liability, at risk of uh, liability? Uh, I suppose. Developers have invested a lot of money based well, on no, the. they haven't, to our knowledge. You know, I mean, they're getting paid. We are paying for that. Amounts of money. We are paying for that. We're paying for all the pre-development costs. 100%? Yes. 100%? Yes. Well, I don't know Island and Knight, Fontaine, all of this stuff is being paid by us. This is part so of the problem. you don't here. think there would be any claim on their part? If it's our land. They put. They have no risk in this, Phil. Absolutely none. It's all on us. I'm not sure that's so clear. But uh, you know, I was uh, looking at the report the other day from the uh, last hearing we had on uh, McMillan, and uh, if I remember correctly, there were about 20 or 30 witnesses, most of whom, who let's say it was, I think it was more like 20, but let's say it was 30, 25 of whom were opposed. But the ANC commissioners and one other group in the area were in support. I thought that was an interesting dynamic. And then we got 37 emails, all of which were opposed. It was a little bit of an email campaign. Uh, last night in one hour, I received 200 emails regarding the Pepco Exelon merger. Very, very different in terms of uh, community reaction. Um, and I've commented on this before that Although there are a number of folks who were not happy with McMillan, it, uh, it just is, it, it, that's, it's just not, uh, how do I want to put it, the, the grassroots just isn't well, the same. If I may, dear chairman, it's not about the design or, you know, I mean, yes, we, many people don't like the particulars of some of the designs. Well, but it is, and it's a, it is about. There, but it's, it was immoral. The way this was carried well, no, out, it was wrong. It is about the design, Ms. Diener, when you say, uh, that uh, you attach this from 2002 and say we should go back and have a new design process. Then no, it I'm is not saying we should have design. a new design process. We had a design process. It wasn't a design process. It was a public inclusion process to elicit recommendations for what should go into an RFP. <coughs> and so we still have that information. We could do a new RFP emphasizing some things that were left out, like the library. And, um, you know, any, or put more things into it and make I'm only responding to your responding, saying it's not about the design or the program. But it is. Well, it's about public property, and, and a library was asked for, and a library has not been gotten. So in, from that point of view, I don't care what it looks like. That's, am I misunderstanding you? But also, let's not forget DEMPED's disposition meeting, where there was 100 plus people there. They didn't have any audio recording. They didn't have any video recording. They had people, stenographers, writing, every, 99 percent of the people that showed up that testified were against it. So you don't hear about that. You don't hear about, and people get burned out, Phil. You know, you come to a meeting, you feel like you're going to be listened to, and it is just like railroaded. How, how do you expect the public to, I guess you can expect them to get even more angry, but when they see this consistently happening, especially these projects out of Demped, I mean the streetcars? We bought the streetcars first. I hear you, and not to prolong <laughs> this. They've been sitting in a lot. And not to prolong this, but as I've said repeatedly, the grassroots with regard to this is just not the same. It just is not the but same. But we would figure our council would have some ethics and call out Fontaine, call out Demped, and call out these issues to help parade and, cha and uh, you know, champion some ethics in these deals. You know, it's not always on the public. It's up to the people we represent. You know about these deals first. We have to get the news out and let people know and inform them of these complicated situations. 
that some people get it, some people don't. But you know, the point is, is that when people see Demped hiring PR firms to actually create a, an AstroTurf campaign against us with DC taxpayer dollars, where, what else do we do except but throw our hands in the air and say, we're in a cesspool of corruption. What else are we gonna do but move out of here? Which is why you see lots of people leaving, either for, forced out or just giving up. And, and that's why maybe only less than 30% of the electorate actually shows up to the polls, you know, to vote for you guys. If I could, please, you keep addressing the grassroots support there. The ANC that you're concerned with <coughs> testified under oath in front of the Historic Preservation Review Board that, quote, the overwhelming majority of the community supported the project. If you look at the friendsofmcmillan.org webpage, you'll see the result of one of the many FOIAs that I did. And we had an email from part of the development team to that ANC after that meeting said, that's great. Thank you for making that comment here. Could you send me copies of the letters that support your statement? There were eight, eight letters of support. That is the basis for the remark, overwhelming community support. There were 600 something comments from the other side. And this is in addition to approximately 8,000 signatures on a petition. However, uh, the council knows about this because we lobbied as many members of the council as would talk to us about this exact point quite a long time ago. But this year, more to the point of what we're doing here today, $2.7 million was authorized to DEMPID for this project right now, yet there's a term sheet that says you won't pay them a penny. In addition, apparently, in, in exchange for signing an exclusive rights agreement with VMP, guaranteeing no competition, DEMPED agreed, okay, we'll pay, uh, you pay your own pre-development costs. We've done our work, you don't have any competition, so pay your way. Now, we only see what FOIA allows us to see, and there's apparently a term sheet out there that we haven't been able to get. We have several FOIAs out right now, but the ones that we've been able to see, that's the deal. You pay your pre-development costs, and yet we're challenging uh, in uh, the zoning and uh, preservation decisions in the court right now. Carolyn Brown is on the other side, and she doesn't come cheap. And that bill is submitted to DEMPED to you on a year-by-year -year basis. I'm not sure that was responsive to my uh, comment with regard to the uh, last hearing, but thank you. Thank you, uh, each of you, for your, your testimony.